So the point of this video is to show you that my schedule is always changing. And that's because life is always changing very quickly. Okay, so after breakfast, I drove my son to school. I might have mentioned this in a previous video. My daughter and son are now going to different schools. <laughs> so my wife and I have been juggling our schedules to get them both to school and hopefully get them both back home. <laughs> now, I'm not scheduled to take my son to school I'm just doing it this week. This is the first week of school. Next week, uh, we have a neighbor who will be driving my son and his friend to school, and I will be picking them both up. Which leads me to this video. I made a video like this about three years ago when I started the Everyday Zen series, and I made a video about my morning schedule. Do you remember that? So I'm getting up a little bit earlier than usual to uh, write this book. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link down below in the description so you can check it out. So the point of this video is to show you that my schedule is always changing. And that's because life is always changing very quickly. And I think many of us experience this kind of situation. I know some people have a very simple situation. I'm thinking of someone right now who's retired. So their life is not changing so much. Their practice schedule remains very consistent. When I sat very long retreats, and I've said this before, I think sitting long retreats is quite simple. And that's because the schedule is exactly the same every day. Some people come out of a long retreat holding on to the retreat schedule. I've done this too. You know, you get back home, you start practicing at 4.30 a.m., you're doing your practice, maybe the kids barge into the room, interrupt you, <laughs> you gotta go to work, you work all day, you come home, you're so tired that you can't sit meditation. And this is 
sometimes a I call a meditation sickness, that we're holding on to some idea or some experience. Maybe in our minds, we are thinking, oh, this retreat was hard practicing. So I'm going to go home and do this hard practicing. And we just end up burned out. My experience about hard practicing is dealing with the situation that you are in, in this very moment. So for my situation, having two kids and trying to work, is everything is consistently changing. You know, during the summer, we kind of had a, a loose schedule. And what I mean by that is we stayed up, all of us, a little bit later. Maybe we slept in a little bit later. So I had to change my practice schedule to fit that kind of situation. And now school has started. We're going to bed a little bit earlier. I'm getting up a little bit earlier. And I have to change my practice situation. But also, it's not only external schedules and circumstances. I think sometimes health-wise, I really have to pay attention to what's working. I know if I'm not getting in enough sleep, I don't function very well. <laughs> if I'm not eating very well, I also can't function clearly. So I think those are things to keep in mind. It kind of reminds me of a monastic experience in some parts of the world, where three months of the year you're sitting in retreat, then there's three months off, then there's three months where you're sitting in retreat again, and three months off. In the tradition I teach in, we call that three-month retreat period kilche, which means tight dharma, which really just means you're, you're putting all your energy and dedicating your time to meditation practice. Then after that three-month retreat, it's a period called heije, which translates to loose dharma, and that's usually a time where maybe monastics will travel from temple to temple and visit monastic friends, things like that. So that's how I'm kind of seeing my life at times. You know, we had the summer off. We went to Brazil, as some of you know. Uh, we did some camping. And so the schedule was pretty loose. And now that school's starting, the schedule is a little bit tighter. And that's how I've adjusted my schedule. I think what's important here is just to be honest and clear about our life situation. Try not to hold some idea about hard practicing. Because again, hard practicing just means taking care of this moment without any hindrance. So, if we have too much expectations or put too much on our plate, then that hinders this moment and we cannot take care of this moment. Someone once told me when the Buddha was experimenting with ascetic practices, there was one time he was only eating one grain of rice a day and just sitting in meditation. You might have seen some pictures of this where he just looks like he's all bones. <laughs> there was one time where the Buddha heard a music teacher talking to a student. And the music teacher said, if the string is too tight, it will snap and cannot be played. If the string is too loose, it will also not be able to be played and won't sound very good. So you must tune it just right. And apparently when the Buddha heard this, he understood the middle way. And he accepted some porridge from a local village person and then ate. So all of us have to find that place. And the middle way is not just set in stone and it's for everybody. 
everybody has to find their middle way. We have different life situations and conditions. So we have to find that balance. And really the only way to find that balance is to pay attention to what's happening right now. Not holding any kind of idea, not trying to get rid of any idea, just right now. Take care of this moment. And then this moment will take care of you because you are not separate from this moment. Those are my thoughts for the day. I hope this video was helpful. I'd be interested in hearing from you about your practice schedule. Are you able to keep it? Are you able to flex when needed? Or does it drive you completely crazy? <laughs> you can let me know in the comments below. Okay, everyone, I hope you're all doing well, and I will see you very soon.